the phone one day, it suddenly occurred to my mother that I couldn't go to restaurants for dates. How are you going to date, she exclaimed in, be in between huge incredulous cackles. No one is going to be able to take you out. Ah. <laughs> Whatever I said, rolling my eyes. My friends are super cool and creative, I tried to explain to her. We don't care for institutions like the nice civil date. I think this scared her for a moment even more than the thought of me never dating anyone again. <laughs> The truth was, I knew things were going to be a little different now if I should meet somebody whom I might want to date. But I hoped that my strange eating disorder wouldn't be seen as a handicap. Sure, it would be awkward to have to explain the whole blog premise to anyone who you know, happened to ask me if I wanted to grab a bite. But men who were so uncreative as to, know, as to not know what to do for a date besides go to a restaurant, I decided I had no need for them. Hey, maybe this could be something like a built-in filtering device, this whole no restaurant thing. I also felt like all of my previous relationships were founded on going to eat in restaurants. This didn't exactly bring a tear of nostalgia to my eye. In high school, my first boyfriend and I would drive to 24-hour diners throughout New Jersey, which no matter the town had the same deco exterior and harsh fluorescent lighting. And there we'd sit in jukebox, or sit in booths for hours, sipping on coffee and plunking quarters into the jukebox. After he moved away for college, we, we began going to like chain restaurants like IHOP and Applebee's, which dotted the highways that then separated us. And after a while, it became harder to tell if we were going to any of these places for the irony or the kitchen value anymore. In college, I dated a vegetarian for a while, and the idea of an exciting restaurant meal was then limited to a large fold-out menu with fake, dish fake meat dishes at a vegetarian Buddhist restaurant in Chinatown. It wasn't bad, but personally, I'd rather have gone to the better Chinese restaurant down the street and ordered a spicy and maybe savory tofu dish garnished with traces of meat for flavor, like mapa tofu. And then with Ben, the ex who broke up with me before this, um, it felt like the first six month of uh, first six months of our relationships were a series of checking out one cute, cool, hip restaurant in Brooklyn after another one. The common this common type of dating wasn't unenjoyable, of course, and it was certainly a good way of good, of exploring the city. But after a while, you might begin to wonder if there was any reason the two of you had decided to spend time together other than to try the next thing on the menu or the next hot restaurant. I was determined to find alternatives to the still old ritual of going out to eat on dates. Dating while not eating out in New York was just the challenge I needed to try to make my experiment more complete. Now, who else is up for the challenge? Okay, so then I'm gonna skip ahead for our time. All right, that weekend I went to a birthday party in Williamsburg. When I left the party, it was 11.30 or so. Spring night was mild and crisp. Um, I was in good spirits, enjoying the air against my face after, after having been inside a stuffy bar. So I picked up my phone and dialed Carol, who lived nearby and who I could bet was hanging out somewhere in the neighborhood. She was. She told me to come meet her at a bar where she was playing pool. Almost immediately after joining them at the table, I met Nick. He and a friend were standing by the pool table watching Carol's game since they had written their names on the board to play next. Uh, we chatted in between watching and playing rounds of pool. He said he was in New York for the summer only, heading off to grad school in Chicago for the fall. In the meantime, he was working at a coffee shop and picking up freelance translation jobs on the side. I told him what I did, and I mentioned my food blog. And as a way of explanation, I handed him my <laughs> mini card for the blog. Uh, yeah, we hang out for a while with Carol, anyway. Um, when I got home, there was already an email in my inbox from this Nick fellow. It was short and to the point. Basically, he wanted to go on a date. I told Carol about it on the phone the next day. So are you going to go out with him, she said. I don't know, maybe. What do you think of him, I asked. I totally I can't even remember, she said broadly. <laughs> but you thought he was cute, right? I had. It was just one of those things, plain attraction. But I have serious concerns that he may be younger than 25, I said. Now that is highly possible, Carol said, with firmness that made it sound like she was finally waking up a little bit. <laughs> My guess on Nick's age was based on the crowd at the bar and also that he was going to grad school in the fall. But here's why I decided that even though he might be young, immature, or for all intents and purposes just not Mr. Wright, I still go on a date with him. He was leaving New York at the end of the summer, so what did anything matter really? It actually sounded great. There would be no pressure, no worries, nothing except for figuring out what to do on a date. 
Instead of a restaurant, maybe it was time to move the all-important date meal to a home setting. What would be the perfect date meal? I began to wonder. It's a term you hear thrown around a lot, though when it came to the actual food, I can think of no limitations or no clear objectives regarding what was on, actually on the plate. Was it something elaborately planned, executed, and plated just so? Or a slapdash easy meal that, was, that left enough time for the really fun stuff? Was it a blood red juicy steak? A communal bowl of spaghetti to slurp at like Lady and her tramp? <laughs> Seafood didn't smell right to me for this category. Neither did anything that was too cheesy or garlicky. I could see how a really rich chocolate dessert could be defined as romantic, but that was no main course. One of my favorite short stories, The Nice Restaurant by Mary Gates Gill, is about a couple dining out one night. The woman, Laurel, is said to be much older than her younger, youthful, energetic companion, Eric. When they're sitting at a restaurant together, Eric says of Laurel, your face was just wildly expressive right then. She replies, I just got sucked into that whole, you know, nice restaurant thing and then got disgusted by it all too quickly. Then after a leisurely meal, the narrator concludes this about Laura's feelings. She absolutely loved him, even though she didn't know, even though she knew they wouldn't be dating for longer than a few months. I think the story is saying in a way that the nice restaurant dinner is sort of like a cat. It has the power to temporarily seduce, transport, and haunt, but the effect is short-lived. You go to the restaurant fully aware of the limitations of its spell. You date him, even though you know he won't be there in the long run, but you do it anyway. What I wanted was this, the reckless sedu seduction, passion, however fickle it may turn out, the nice restaurant factor, but at home. Nick called me the next day. Yeah, we go on a date. Okay, I'm gonna skip this part. <laughs> How am I doing that time? <laughs> um, I'm not totally sure, a little bit more. Okay. Okay, the following Wednesday night, we go on a boring date, nothing happens. Okay, the following Wednesday night, I was sitting in my kitchen licking ice cream off a spatula. I just, turned up a <laughs> I just turned up a batch of fresh basil infused ice cream, and I was trying it out for the first time. My cell phone rang at 10.30. It was Nick, and he said he had been hanging out with friends in the neighborhood. He asked if I wanted to grab a drink somewhere. I, hesit I hesitated. First, it was a weeknight. Then I had to clean, clean up this ice cream stuff. But earlier, I'd pick up... I picked up a six pack of beer and I was downing one at the moment, so I offered him some beer and some ice cream at my place instead. About 20 minutes later, Nick pulled up his bike into my apartment and awkwardly left it at the door. I offered him a beer and a bowl of basil ice cream. He glanced at the pots of herbs I had placed on my windowsill, which included basil. I've never heard of basil ice cream before, he said. It's not that unusual, I said. I suddenly realized how long it had been since I had been served a scoop of ice cream in an unfamiliar bowl. It had been a year since I'd been not eating out. Anyway, <clears throat> we stood all at a table and talked for a while. We quickly got on the topic of philosophy and Nick had been reading a lot lately to prepare, to prepare for grad school. I was attentive to Nick's ramblings, even though deep down I couldn't help thinking that, that the study was a lot of hemming and hawing without action. I noticed that Nick didn't really finish his ice cream, and that irked me a little. I finished mine in my first seconds. It had a very strong presence of sweet Italian basil leaves. From soaking a couple of handfuls in the milk and cream, it was a deep, almost jade green color. After a long time talking, I looked at my watch. It was almost two in the morning. Well, you probably need to get up for work in the morning, Nick said, taking the cue. Finally, I, said, I thought to myself. I was afraid he'd never say it. Thanks for coming, I said. He got up to get his bike, and I followed him to the door. But then it was, as we stood and looked at each other for a moment, I had a feeling the night was over. Like a pair of tigers, we both sort of lurched at each other's faces at once. <laughs> the kiss lasted long, a little too long, and I was sitting too close to the hallway to my bedroom. Something came over me, a tide of recklessness, and we both gravitated through the hallway, cloying and dropping clothes, shoes. I almost felt like I was in a movie of someone or something not like myself. But when I woke up in the morning to go to work the next day with another body beside me, it was clear that that was not the case. Let's really leave off. For <laughs>